How's everybody doing? It's Joe here, and today we're looking at something kind of weird from the new standard format um, from Primal Clash on two Steam Siege. So this is a deck that you've probably not seen before. It's a little bit quirky, and it might look like a bit of a joke deck at first, but I assure you I have put the practice in with this deck, and you know what? It's actually quite good and has some pretty decent matchups uh, so far in what seems to be popular and what seems to be hyped up uh, in the current meta. So this is Quad Hoopa. Well, I should call it really Hoopa Zorork. It's probably a more accurate name for it, but I feel like every deck I post on my channel has Zorork in it in some capacity. But, um, yeah, I'm quite a fan of this deck. It's sort of started as a fun concept for something that I was like, okay, how can I absolutely destroy Mewtwo? I, I, I kind of saw this card and I was like, you know what, I want to come up with something fun for this. I think I can make this into a deck. And it didn't really start out, it was too serious, but uh, I think we've worked on it for about two weeks now, and it's actually kind of come together pretty well and it's able to do things that I didn't think it would be able to do so um, yeah this guy sports a lot of quirks that you wouldn't think he would have otherwise anyway this is the card we're building our deck around it's um, one of the pre-release promos actually the probably the one that you didn't want to get necessarily it's like yeah there he is um, because it didn't seem that good off the bat especially with dimension value gone means you can't hyperspace punch for free or anything like that um, but actually I think it's got some pretty cool quirks to it that kind of make it a sort of viable non-EX deck when there aren't a huge amount of viable non-EX decks and the ones that are require an awful lot of support and are easily countered like Rainbow Road and Raichu and stuff like that um, I think this guy can kind of stand on his own two feet um, or his own two his own six arms even anyway let's have a look at the attacks so first of all Portal Strike this is what we're using with the deck three Psychic Energy um, that's kind of daunting that doesn't look like this kind of attack cost you want to be looking at and saying I want to build a deck around that. It's a lot of energy, but let's not forget the Max Elixir exists and Waterbox did manage to consistently run with higher energy counts, despite the fact that um, it had such high energy counts, Max Elixir allowed it to be a deck, and that's kind of the same concept I went with with this thing. It does 130 damage and you can't use it next turn, right? 130 is a big number. Let's say Mega Scizor, even if they resist you, you're doing 110 and then you 110 again, and you've done 220, and that's enough to take a knockout. Um, if they've got shield energy on them, you can counteract that with Fury Belt. You've got ways around that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this is actually quite a big number, and you can set it up and work out the math so that you can actually start taking quote-unquote one-hit KOs with it, because you can use Hyperspace Punch to kind of put damage counters on things first. You can use Absol to move damage counters around and make sure the Portal Strike is hitting 170, 180, um, you're able to fix these numbers for yourself, and you have ways to actually take one hit KOs with the deck. What you kind of do is you sort of start off with Hyperspace Punch, which is the other attack Hooba has, where for a colorless energy, in this case Psychic, the attack does 20 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, and yes, you can target the active. This is not going to be errated like Galvantula was. Um, basically, this is pretty cool for setting up stuff. So the way the math works out is, let's say I have a Fury Belt on a Hoopa, and I do 30 damage to the active, with the Fury Belt on, because that's how it works if you target the active with hyperspace. Then you'll do 140 with Portal Strike, and that's 170. Okay, cool. Well, what if I do 20 to 20, 20 to something and 20 to something else? I can then use Absol to move that 20 damage um, over to the other thing, so that's 40 damage in total on one Pokemon. And then Portal Strike does 170, or with the Fury Belt, it does 180. Um, and you actually have these ways of hitting knockouts that you wouldn't think you got. Like, even look at um, Xerneas Break and a Veltal Break. Both cards that are seeing a lot of play, Xerneas in particular, um, has 150 HP. 130 plus 20 is 150, and you're able to take the knockout. Greninja Talonflame. Um, Talonflame has 130 HP. Straight up, you knock it out. It's actually got some pretty cool numbers. Psychic is great, uh, given all the Mewtwo that's being played as well, and you're not actually that weak to uh, Garbodor either. So Portal Strike definitely puts in the work against Mewtwo. Um, yeah, this card has a good few things going for it that I kind of skipped over at first, and I was just... Uh, let's make a joke deck out of this ridiculous energy cost and see for how far I can take it. Um, but you do kind of need to make the deck built around this stipulation here. Now, when you're actually playing the deck, it doesn't really feel like this text is even here. Because you have so many ways out of it, so many ways to get around it, and so many ways to just keep using Portal Strike to keep hitting for massive numbers. So, But you still have to build the deck in such a way that you can get over this effect. It's not that hard to do, and actually it creates some really cool situations. So our main... basically... If Hoop is sent to the bench, uh, the effect ends, because all effects are removed once the Pokemon hits the bench. So we can use the Rourke to stand in and retreat, and that will end the effect, and we can keep attacking. Um, 
there's a few other things we can use, like escape rope will send us to the bench. Ranger will just remove our own effect completely. Uh, but the other cool thing about this is if our opponent sees a Shaman on our bench and wants to take a cheap prize, well, that in turn will send the Hoopa to the bench and reset the attack for us. So it creates some really awkward situations and it's surprisingly easy to get out of this. Um, it's a bit like Volcanian's attack, actually identical to Volcanian's attack with a different energy cost. Um, yeah, and 130 HP on a basic with a Fury Belt is 170 as a non-EX, as our main attacker, as a basic? That's ridiculous! Um, Xerneas and Eveltal and the new Hoopa are the other things that kind of have these huge numbers, but none of them really have the damage output the Hoopa does, save for Rainbow for Xerneas. So, um, this thing honestly puts in the work and it can be very annoying and very difficult to knock out in one hit. Uh, even decks like Mega Scizor does 120, but you've got 130 HP, so even with that, if you rebelt, you're tanking that hit. So, I quite like it. Um, now, as for how you build the deck, I've spent about two weeks working on this thing. Uh, like I said, played a good few matches with it online now, and I really like it, but there's a couple of different inclusions and cuts that you can make, um, and I'm still not sure what the proper, like, most competitive list um, will be because I think there's a lot of different techie cards that you can run to sort of sort out a couple of different matchups maybe um, or give the deck different qualities depending on how you want to play it uh, and I'll go over those at the end of this video if you just want to skip ahead and go to the games feel free if you just want to net deck this list um, the PTCGO list will be can copy and paste it in the description so you can go ahead and do that if you want um, there's a lot of explaining to do with some of my card choices though even though it might not look like it so I recommend you stick around but hey um, feel free to click the annotations or hit the description if you just want to skip ahead so, anyway, like I was saying, we also have the Rourke. This is our main way of resetting our attack, and it works perfectly fine. Mindjack does 10 plus 30 more for each of our bench for each of their bench Pokemon, which, as we know, is a fantastic attack. Um, this is pretty cool as well because our main, like, bad matchup is Mega Rayquaza. I don't think we're going to see a lot of Mega Rayquaza anyway because it's not that great of a deck, and anyone who's tried it out will probably know this, and even with Karen coming in, I don't think it'll still be one of the top tier decks. Um, I think Zorork definitely puts in the work against that deck. We can force our opponent to bench a decent amount of Pokemon if we have a Fury Belt on a Hoopa and they have to bench to take the KO, and then if they got a big bench, we can come in with Zorork um, and take the KO with Mindjack. Like, and it's easy enough to power up as well with Max Elixirs. You might think DCE is the go-to way with this thing, but I didn't really want to make space just for DCE, so it's Max Elixir to Zorua attached to Zorork. You can get it up if it actually works perfectly fine. Uh, we're also running a 3-3 line of it because it's so important to get it out and I didn't want to lose a game just because I missed hitting Zorork so I think it's important to really max out this guy well not max it out, 3-3 is fine, you don't need to go up to 4-4 but I, I couldn't see me cutting any of these pieces One Absol is a, the MVP of the whole deck this thing really sort of just brings it together and it was once I put in the Absol it was like the whole sort of puzzle just came together in my head and I was like yep, yeah, this Absol will make it work so like I was saying it fixes a lot of math uh, for us. So with Hyperspace Punch, we can move 20 of that over to the one Pokemon. That's 40 damage to one thing for one energy. It sets a Portal Strike. That happens as well. Um, it can set up Mind Jack. It's our way of sort of increasing Mind Jack's damage output. Now that Target Whistle and Muscle Band are gone, this is sort of a better way of doing it. Also, let's say you hit a Pokemon for 130. Um, that's cool, but you don't need to do the extra 130. You only need like another 50 damage to kill it, right? So you can move 30 damage from it. Uh, onto, let's say, a 180 HP Pokemon or a 170 HP Pokemon. And then you can take the KO with the Hoopa. And then they bring up, you've got this, like, 170 HP Pokemon on their bench that can then be knocked down one hit by Hoopa. Which is pretty cool, actually. Between that and Hyperspace Punch, you add up as much more damage than you would think. And you can really just come in and clean up stuff with Portal Strike um, against Giratina as well is one of the easiest Pokemon for us to kill because of Portal Strike just hitting 170 so consistently. Um, and even if you're not hitting, like, Darkrai Resist Psychic, cool, even stuff like that, you can still just two-shot it with Portal Strike because this is a ton of damage, and you can stream the attack very easily. So keeping it going and just being able to two-shot everything is or one-shot things with Absol support is really easy. We can also reuse the Absol if we want to. We have a couple of ways of doing this. Um, the first one is to Parallel City ourselves. So it gets discarded. Then we super rod it back into the deck so we can reuse it. Uh, the other way is Ninja Boy, but PTCGO, I'm going to double check this live on air. Yep, it is still banned. So Ninja Boy is a card I really want in this deck, actually. Um, I'll explain why in just a second, but 
for now I'll keep going with the Pokemon. It's just two Shaman. We don't really need any more than that. Um, there's a lot of other Pokemon options you can play in this list, and I'll go through them at the end. Um, so again, stick me with me if you want to hear a couple of more different ways that you can play this deck. Onto the supporters, I've gone for a 3-3 split of Anne and Sycamore. Sycamore is normally what you want. You want to be playing like four Sycamore and two Anne in most decks, but I kind of think in this that we're kind of basing a lot of our resources on fixing this stipulation. Um, and I'm making it sound worse than it really is, trust me, but there's a few kind of things that we need to think about here, is that first of all, a lot of, there's a lot of kind of one-off cards that I don't want to discard early on, like Escape Rope, the Max Lixers, even discarding one can be crucial. Super Odd is a really important card in this deck. Um, Parallel City, Fury Belts, all this kind of stuff, I don't want to discard any of this. Um, and especially because we'll just be getting hands like with a bunch of energy in them, I don't want to stick them more of that away. I want them in my deck so that I can play Max Elixir and have a better chance of drawing into them. Um, and as you can see, we've gone for a ridiculously high energy count, so our hands will get clogged with energy a couple of times. Uh, it doesn't really make the deck inconsistent, it's just a thing that happens. Uh, we never miss an attachment, which is pretty cool though. Uh, N is good because if we have a handful of energy and take more away, we decrease our odds with Max Elixir, but if we have a handful of energy and um, we play N, we increase our odds with Max Elixir because now they're all back in our deck. So that was kind of the thinking between the 3-3 split. Tool is on is pretty standard. One Ranger, we only really run this to reset our own effect, and it works perfectly fine. And one Skyla. This was just kind of an extra consistency supporter. This slot really should be Ninja Boy. Um, maybe Hex Maniac as well, if you're afraid of, like, Greninja and stuff like that, but... Um, Hex Maniac might help out with the Ray matchup now that I think about it a bit as well. I think, ultimately, so far, I haven't really found a position where I've been in a game and thought, yeah, I want a Hex here, but it might be something that I include later on. Uh, for now, it's just a Skyla. In real life, my deck is actually has a Ninja Boy in it, because uh, resetting Absol is cool, and also there's some cool plays you can make with Ninja Boy. Which, essentially, you can... Like, I'll get onto this when I'm talking about the additional Pokémon in a bit, but uh, being able to switch out something with three basics energy on it into something completely different uh, can create... actually open up a lot of options for you. So, anyway, onto the items. Four Ultra Ball, four VS Seeker, four T-Mail. I'm finding it hard to cut down from 4 T-Mail just because it's so important that we remain consistent without having to discard a bunch of cards like I was saying with Sycamore, and also I want to hit my Max Elixirs, and I want to hit my Zororks as consistently as possible, so... Um, yeah, I'd say you could go down to 3, but I wouldn't go any lower than that. As for the other cards, 4 Max Elixir. Um, we rely on this even more so than Waterbox does. Like, with Waterbox, you can Max Elixir to uh, Toad with a Fury Belt on it, and you'll probably tank a hit. Then you can just retreat with the Mana Fee, you can heal it off with Rough Seas and stuff like that, and it's okay because, you know, you ha you give yourself a lot more time, especially if you're Quaking Punching your opponent. We don't with this deck, we just need to hit Max Elixir, so. Uh, as you can probably tell, I've set up the get deck to just hit it as consistently as possible. And one Escape Rope. This is basically uh, for a couple of reasons. One is so that Garbodor doesn't affect us as much when it comes to resetting Portal Strike, because... If Garbodor's up, we can't stand in, but we can play Escape Rope and then just retreat with something with a Float Zone on it on our bench. The other thing is uh, Giratina will not let us play Tools, so if we don't get the Float Zone down in time, it basically means that we can still play the Escape Rope and get ourselves out of the active anyway. Um, the other reason is kind of... It's nice just to have the sort of pseudo-disruption aspect of it, this could be a switch. I think I definitely wouldn't run three flow stone. I think I like having the two stone and the one sort of manual switching card. Um, and if you want to play a bit safer, you can run a switch, but I kind of like the risk reward escape rope gives you. So that's why it's in the list for now. Especially because we're so good at picking off both Hoopas and Shamans with this deck. We also have one super rod, like I said, honestly, the MVP of the deck, <laughs> along with Absol. This thing has really put in the work. For A, shuffling in just a bunch of energy, like if a Hoopa gets knocked out with three energy on it, we can just put all three of them straight back in and keep going from there. Um, we rarely need, like, five Hoopas in a game. Like, you should be able to win a game with four Hoopa. That's generally how it works, and you can, if you really need to, you can clean up with Zororks and stuff like that. You probably won't need all of your Hoopa, but um, being able to sort of comfortably Ultra Ball away an Absol early game, being able to shuffle in just a ton of energy back into the deck at once, both of these re things are what the Super Rod is here for. And even more so than in other decks where you see Super Rod and you're like, oh, of course you have it. It just It's absolutely necessary in this one. I wouldn't up it, though, obviously, because it's kind of a dead card at 
most points of the game. Also, we have one parallel city. I'm kind of debating this one myself because, like, everyone and their grandmother is playing parallel city at the moment because they're afraid of Ray, and also just because it's a really solid stadium um, at removing shamans because it's really the only way we have to do that now. Also, because everyone's playing Hoopa, you can limit your opponent's bench, and then all of a sudden Hoopa becomes a lot riskier to play, and yeah, Parallel City is just a really good card at the moment, and so, so many people are playing it that it becomes kind of annoying for us to play it ourselves, because if there's one in play, we can't play this one. Um, but when you do get it off, it's actually fantastic. You get a reset Absol, you get it, remove your shames from the board, and just force your opponent to go through six straight prizes. Um, six prizes on 140 HP non-EXs that are doing a ton of damage. Um, that's pretty daunting to face. So if you do get to pull off the Parallel City, um, it really does put in the work. And even if you hit a turn one, uh, that's quite nice too. I got three Fury Belt. Considering upping this to four, if I can find the space. Um, I don't think I can, but it basically just makes Hoopa from good to fantastic. It's the ultimate asset for it to have. Two flaws on, like I said, this is a Rorks and 13 Psychic Energy. This was 12. I went into a game, I missed all four of my Max Elixirs, and the first thing I did was put in a 13th Energy. Um, unlucky for some, but I think, honestly, we just want to hit all of these. Like, even missing, like, if we miss two of them, that can be a game changer. Missing one of them, you're probably fine to do, but missing two of them is um, probably going to cost you a game, so you don't want to be doing that. Hence why it's so high. Um, yeah, that's really the base deck that I'm going to be working with and playing today. Um, I'm going to go through the other options, though, Pokemon-wise, at least. There's a couple of things you can run. So the first one is going to be Fright Knight of Eltal. And so there's no discar tool discard the format right now, right? So getting rid of Fury Belts and stuff can be annoying. But um, if you can, if you have Zorork in your list, running Fright Knight of Eltal is pretty easy because it, retreating out of it and pivoting into it becomes so much easier to do. Um, and having that asset available to you is, in theory, quite strong. Like I was saying, a lot of our math revolves around hitting 180 HP Pokemon, hitting 170 HP Pokemon, but if they have a Fury Belt on them, this becomes a lot more difficult. So Fright Knight is basically here to sort of work around that issue. In On paper, it sounds like a great idea. I played with this one for a good while, and it just never came up. Against Megas, you could argue it's good, because you can get it in play turn one, but you absolutely need it, like in the active position on the very uh, first turn of the game for that to be a thing, and if you miss that, then there was no point in running the Friday Night in the first place. Plus, I can't really afford to run even one Dark Energy to power up Pitch Black Spear. If I could, I'd consider it, because that'd be a pretty cool Ninja Boy target as a result. But ultimately, no, I think I... I think you can run the deck fine without it, but if you're having trouble with Fury Belt, then that's your go-to answer. The slightly cheekier option is not to... <laughs> Because, again, in theory, your math can work out so that or your opponent's big attackers only have about 10 or 20 HP left. Um, so, on paper, not to make sense, because you can come in with it and then take, a, like, three prizes with this tiny little bird. But, again, in practice, it just never came up. And against things like Mega Scizor and Darkrai, which actually resist Psychic, your 20 damage is just reduced to zero straight away. So, there's no real point in playing it against those matchups. Um... In matchups like Xerneas Giratina, you're just going to win that anyway. You have a very good matchup against that deck. Um, so the Natsu doesn't really make a difference. So in practice, on paper, fantastic. If you're bringing this to League and you want some fun and you want to just blow people's minds on like a 1% chance, then go for the Natsu. But personally, I couldn't really get much use out of it. The other three more Pokemon that I want to talk about, these are all... Now, these ones that I'm going to be talking about here are targets that... like. In the deck I'm playing, like the deck I have for my real life play, it has Ninja Boy in it and it has Lugia EX in it at the moment because I really like what this card can actually offer you. So, you have two good attacks. First of all, you can power up a Hoopa and you can attack with that, but then you have the two attacks uh, from Lugia, which are both really good. A, you get the elevated HP of 170, um, which goes up to 210 with the Fury Belt. B, you have a different weakness to Hoopa which can be really crucial if your opponent's running like a Mew or something like that, just to attack for a Mega Mewtwo, and then they in turn take you out. Um, but see, just these attacks are fantastic. Like, Aeroball, we know how much damage this does. Um, it's just a really consistent damage output that can be fantastic to have. Deep Hurricane, um, like I was saying about Parallel City being annoying, 
It doesn't really hurt us if it's in play, we can still work around it, but if we want to play our own, we'd like to remove theirs. So Deep Hurricane can actually just discard the Stadium card in play. Um, on top of that, it does 150 damage, plus Absol, plus Hyperspace, plus Fury Belt. We're going to be taking knockouts with this thing. Um, I really quite like this one. And even for, and like even after you play the Ninja Boy, and there's no Stadium card in play, you can still Aero Ball for like base 80 if you have 4, dam four energy on it. You're still doing putting in the work. Um, yeah, I really like the Lugia option. It's my go-to one at the moment. The other one is a bit cooler. Um, I don't actually own one, so let's just forget you didn't see that. Not Definitely not that. Is this guy. Um, yeah, Damage Change Mewtwo. We all know this guy. He's been one of the most hyped decks so far going into this format. Um, the idea with this one was that, let's say you take a knockout, then your opponent promotes a new attacker with no damage on them. And then they hit your Hoopa. And they're gonna knock. They're like they're gonna two shot it. Then you ninja boy into Mewtwo EX, and you just damage change it all off. And then you just follow up with shatter shots until the Mewtwo gets knocked out, or you just ninja boy it back into the Hoopa, whatever you want. But that was kind of the plan with this one. I think in practice it's a little bit niche, and you need to time the cards really well, and you need to just have them. And now that we don't have Battle Compressor, and you really don't want to be running more than one ninja boy for these kind of quirky plays. Um, it doesn't work as well. So I think if you do pull it off, it's pretty cool. And this is still a solid attacker on its own. And I feel like it would sort of improve your Mega Scizor matchup a little bit. Because if Mega, Mega Scizor is fine, you can beat it. But if they're running Pokemon Center Lady, it becomes a lot more difficult. I feel like if you surprise them with a damage change, you could actually kind of turn the game on its head a little bit. Um, but again, that still requires really good play and a lot of luck off your draws because you need to kind of follow it up with a portal strike almost. But that's something to play around with, really. What else we got? The final one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy this guy has an attack, believe it or not. Hyperspace Fury. You can discard two energy attached to it and it does 100 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, uh, even on the bench. Now, before we begin... If this did 110, no question, it's in the deck. Um, I would absolutely give it a shot. I haven't tried this one yet. I have. This is still in my head. This is just all theory. Um, the idea is so that you basically, you dinge boy into it late game so that you can then just hyperspace fury and knock out a shaman on the bench or something on the bench that can like uh, take two prizes and win the game that way. The reason it's not in here is because also in theory, I don't think it works. First of all, setting up 110 damage, not a problem, right? We've got the apps all, we've got the hyperspace. Um, I've just realized that these are the same attack names, aren't they? Oh, it's hyperspace punch. Okay, well, you can hyperspace punch to do the other 20, so um, setting up the 110 isn't actually that difficult at all. And obviously powering it up isn't either. Um, but for a few reasons, like one, if you're getting Ninja Boy in the late game, um, you can probably also get Lizond, at which point it's just as good. Um, if not better because you're hitting more damage with the Hoopa. So I don't really get that. And two is the Scoundrel Ring ability is kind of terrible for this deck. I mean, we can search out one Shaman with it. I mean, that's fine, but we don't really get full use out of it like we would in other decks, and starting with it can be kind of annoying as well, I guess, uh, because obviously you want it in the deck. You don't want it in play. If we had like AZ or Cassius or something like that, it might be a bit more viable, but it's not. Um, and C is you're going to be doing it in the late game. And if you're in the late game, you want the Hoopa to be in your deck. Because otherwise, it isn't a valid Ninja Boy target, since Ninja Boy can only target your deck. But the issue with that is, in the late game, odds are you've already drawn into it. And it's either in your hand or your discard pile. And you will have need to have super audited it back in, in that case. Um, so I think there's a lot sort of going for and against it. It would look cool as hell if you pulled it off, but... I think this is the worst out of all the options I've kind of shown off, but I figured I'd put it here just as, as an option instead. <sighs> well, that was a lot of talking about this deck. I think it did need quite a bit of explanation. Um, I'm going to hop into some games now. I still think... I, I do want to show you guys that this is actually a valid deck. Like, this isn't just me going on about some kind of crazy stuff. Um, I do think this could put in the work, but time will tell. I think the list will change depending on what other people are playing as well. Uh, so we'll hop into the game. And hopefully we'll get to play against some kind of semblance of a meta deck anyway and show it off. Okay, Psychic Colorless. 
that's probably Mega Mewtwo. Which, I mean... Again, there's a lot going for and against this matchup. I win the coin flip, so yes, I will go first. Like, the issue with the matchup is they can just shatter shot you and knock you out. Oh, that's, um... That is a hand and a half. <laughs> oh dear, that's a hand and a half. And now you see why I like the um, up to end count, even though it didn't really work here. Oh dear, this is going to be bad. That's not what you want to see. I am guarantee you I just hot deck another energy. Even if I got a Hoopa, that wouldn't be too bad. Oh no. Oh no. Right. I think it actually is worth shaming for one here. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Okay, because if we get N, we're good. No, but I'll st still thin out the Ranger, because why not? I guess I can Max Elixir to the Shaman. Mm, I don't really see the merit in doing that. Not fantastic. Okay, well, we still get Hoopa and the Max Elixir, and we get the Rourke next turn, um, which is fine by me. Uh, there is, like... You could say play the Ultra Ball first so that Max Elixir has better odds of hitting, but I live on the edge. Yeah, we hit it. Okay, I was worried there because five of our energy are like gone because there's one there, one in hand, three in the discard. But I'm fine with that. Yeah, we'll leave it there. So I just need an attachment and a Max Elixir next turn. And we're pretty good. I mean, I'm only assuming he's playing Mega Mewtwo. He might be playing something completely different, I don't know. But uh, with those colors in this format, I'm going to take a wild guess. Now, we can hit him for weakness, which is great, like I said, but he can obviously hit us for weakness. Uh, damage change doesn't do a huge amount to us, obviously, because we won't be leaving damage counters on him. We're just sort of taking the knockout. Um, and obviously, Mewtwo, Mega Mewtwo's second uh, main attack, Psychic Infinity, I believe it's called, doesn't actually do... Um, apply weakness, so it's a little bit more difficult to take the knockout, but we still have a ton of energy on us anyway, so um, I don't know. I feel like we're easier to set up than he is, so hopefully that works into our favor. Shatter Shot is something we do have to worry about, because that does apply weakness, but okay, he's getting his own hoop out. Like, Shatter Shot will hit us for what? Like, even if he has, like, it's 30 times the number of energy, so if he has two psychics on him okay well it is near two so if he has two psychics on him and like a double colorless that's 30 60 doubled is 120 not not gonna say so he does need three straight psychic energy on him uh, i feel like we'll set up a bit quicker so hopefully that works out for me now he didn't play the hex maniac which means ultra ball for shaman is an option here um stupidly i didn't check if both of my shamans were or not. I don't think I got the option to search my deck though, so I won't be too hard on myself. All right, we're gonna see the T mail. I'm probably gonna Ultra Ball anyway. Um, ooh, Parallel City. Now this is what I mean about the one Parallel City about how why that's kind of risky to run um, nowadays. But yeah, I mean, I'll Ultra Ball anyway because I want to hit the Max Elixir next turn and I want to, like, definitely get it. Uh, we got two in hand. And, like, if he leaves Shaman active, that's just two straight-up easy prizes for us. And we've already got a Sycamore in the discard, so we don't have to worry about... Uh... We don't have to worry about... What am I talking about? We don't have to worry about, like, being ended to just BS Seekers. So, because sometimes we do have games where just we don't get a second more in the discard pile because we're just playing end because we have a slightly higher count of them, and that kind of decreases the consistency a little bit. And he has gotten rid of the double colorless. He has gotten rid of the super rod as well. And the trubbish comes out. So yeah, we're not going to get a whole lot of use out of the orc this game. Uh, but the ranger is in the discard early, so we can still abuse that. I believe he hasn't played a supporter yet. He could end us, and I'm fine with that. Gonna parallel himself. Yeah, I feel like I would've put the float zone on that Shaman. But I suppose... Out of all the Pokemon he has there, that's the one he'd rather, like, let get killed. So... Interesting to see he's running Hex Maniac and Garbodor. 
Like, I assume he's not going to get much use out of uh, the hex now, but uh, I guess I can see that for myself. Escape rope's kind of funny here. Because I could play that and either force him to let me kill the Garbodor or let me kill the Mewtwo, one or the other. Like, Oh, we got the Max Elixir. Okay, so I'm going to Ultra Ball first. A um, couple of interesting decisions here. So I think I'm going to Ultra Ball away as Rourke. And then either Escape Rope. Hmm. Do I care about my abilities? How much do I care about my abilities? Because I want to play the Super Rod. I think, do I have to Ultra Ball always Rourke and Floatstone? You know what, I can just not Ultra Ball, I think that's fine. So instead, if I Super Rod them all back in... Yeah, let's do that. Super Rod back in three, Psychic Energy. And then Max Elixir. Oh my god, you're kidding me, right? 10 out of 37 cards. God damn it. This kind of changes things a little bit. Hmm. Oh man, that's not nice. Do I still escape rope? Yeah, why not? I've got the Zoroark rushing retreat option here. I can even mind jack if I want. Yeah, like if he promotes the Trubbish, I can still mind jack for the knockout. So I'm fine with that. Yay! Okay, so we can still get this. Yeah, we're not overly hurt by Garbodor, but um, it's nice to deal with it. Especially because I can just deal with that Shaman later anyway, because he's already played his parallel, so... I'm not too worried about that. And we do get the um, energy. This could be the opportunity to Ultra Ball away my own parallel and set up another Zarua. Which I kind of like the idea of. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, now, if Trubbish had 60 HP, I could actually just hyperspace punch with a Fury Belt and knock it out. But unfortunately, that's not a thing. So we'll do this. And we'll stand in. 3, 6, 9, and yep, we get the knockout. And let's see, 30, 60. I can't see him knocking us out next turn. Unless he has the Mega Mewtwo with like a DCE. That'd be like 3, 6, 9, 12. 15. Okay, he will get the knockout if he does that, but we got the Zaru down, so I'm fine with that. And we'll mind check for the knockout. Well, we get a Fury Belt, so that's good. Oh, I'm so pissed that I missed that Max Lexer. And three in there already. We're not off to a good start here. Um, oh, that's good. I'm okay with that. I'm very much okay with that. I get the point, he's trying to limit his bench, but if we hit Max Elixir this turn, we are so good to go. Um, question is, do I leave a bench space open for Shaman? I'm kind of tempted to do so, given that I've already sacrificed the Super Rod, but I would also like to leave a bench space open for Absol, and I think I can get rid of one Hoopa. A bit frustrating, but what can you do? We'll just stick that on there. I suppose I could go for Shaman here, but... Let's see. We know he's got DCE and Shaman in hand. 30, 60, 90. Um, 120, 150, 160 base. Not knocking me out. By 10 HP. So I'm tempted to do that. But I think 30, 40. Nah, you know what? I think I'd rather just protect this guy. So we're just going to mind jack. You could argue that there's not even really a point in mind jacking here. Um, it's actually this kind of situation where the Fright Knight of Elta will be really cool. Because I get to bench that and retreat it into it. And just sort of said, okay, you can't use your Spirit Links next turn and I'll kill you. 
So probably no real point in me actually doing that. I should have just retreated to the Zarua, but you live and learn. Since we've already gone through one floodstone and escape rope, so um, I need to find my other one to get this Zoro Zorork, the next one powered up anyway. Uh, yeah, like if we can kill this Mewtwo right here, we're in such a good position. Because he's got no energy on this one. I guess he could make a turbo, but he's only he'd only have like one in the discard, and he'd get two on that way, so. And we're gonna get end. That's fine by me. Unless he's running his own Max Elixirs. Okay, we've well got the Trubbish now. Looks like he's not actually... Oh, he's got the Mega Mewtwo. Okay, he can knock us out then. Yeah. But we get the knockout now. So we got the Psychic in hand. Nice. And he hasn't really got anything on his board, so I'm actually going to Absol. And I'm going to move 30 of this onto the Trubbish. Now, do I want to play the Trainer's Mail? What have we got in here? Given that I've got Ranger in there, and if I just don't play a supporter here, I think he'll be like, okay, well, he's, got, he's, drawn, he's drawn dead. But on the other hand, yeah, I think I'm going to leave the Trainer's Mail's. Because there's nothing I really want right now. He's not going to take a knockout next turn. Unless he's running something weird with max elixirs. So I'm going to portal strike. Take the knockout. And then next turn I can just ranger. And reset. So if he doesn't end me, that'd be great. Oh, he's got the Mega Evolution. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I suppose if he has Mega Turbo and DCE. Hey, we're good. Gotta love the stipulation that it doesn't actually apply weakness. Alright, well... Wow, okay. Um... We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And this. I feel like Skyla. Because I just want to hit Max Elixir, right? How many we got? We got five energy here. Out of 19 cards. 18 cards. I'll take one more with the Trainer's Mail. I'll take VS Seeker. Alright, five of these are energy. Come on. Yeah. Now we're in a fantastic position. Alright, and because he didn't get the Garbodor up there, we're good to do this. Um, I think this is the game locked up right now. I cannot see a win condition for him here. So we're going to Portal Strike. <clears throat> he could end us to one, but we still got quite a lot of energy in the deck. Um, and we only need to find one to win, because no matter what he promotes, we can still take the knockout. And this is all assuming that he can find a way to do 10 damage here, which he actually can, but... This has been a pretty good de actually game to show off the deck, um, despite the awful opening hand. Okay, well he can't use his own parallel. I should have known that he'd have a Shrine of Memories on hand, of course, but... Uh, my own parallel is gone, so he's going to end us to one. Trainer's Mail. Perfect. 20 cards in deck. I think like three of them are VS Seeker. Mm, four of them. Okay, we're good. We'll have a top deck. We just need one energy to win the game. Um, everything's coming up Millhouse. Oh, and he does... Okay, well. Wow. Wow. Um, it made us a lot easier on us. I think we would have had it anyway. But, um, yeah, that was pretty good. You know what? How long has it been? I think I'm going to cut it there just because it's been a pretty long video and I don't want to bore people with Hoopa anymore. Um, I guess I can play it a bit more on request, but I do encourage you guys to try this one out yourself. It's a really fun list. 
It's got some pretty good answers to uh, the meta, like Mega Mewtwo, like Scizor, you can beat it. Um, I think the biggest issues for it are Volcanion. I haven't tested that one yet, I do want to know how that goes. Um, and Mega Rayquaza. I think Darkrai you can beat Giratina, you absolutely smack around the place. Um, Xerneas Break is the laughably easy. Mega Gardevoir is a little bit difficult because it hits you for weakness and you don't hit it for weakness. Um, that's a really nice quirk of being a psychic type that doesn't actually hit anything... Um, isn't like return KO'd for weakness. Um, not even by dark. So it's it's a little harder to take for Mega Gardevoir. So I haven't seen many people hyping that one up. So I think I'm okay on that one. But otherwise, it seems alright. And of course, it needs a little... I don't want to do that. It needs a little bit more work. I understand that. But I think there's some potential here. I think it's cool little Absol plays you can make. Um, I didn't really get to show that off to its full potential, but it was taking one hit KOs anyway. Um, and he whiffed a good few things, but... What can you do? I think I set myself up pretty well anyway for only hitting one max licks of the whole game. But uh, yeah, I think it was one or two, whatever. So that's Hoopa. That's the list. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope, uh, I hope you give it a shot. Don't write it off just yet. This has been Joe from Whoopercast. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.